right what is going on everybody it's tristan and today in this video what i got going on for you guys is basically we're going to be discussing how you guys cannot overpay on your shoes and also buy your sneakers at the right time really that's what this video is going to be about so if you're someone that's kind of you know trying to save some money on when you buy your sneakers or if you really don't care about how much you pay for your sneakers you know you got the money hey i respect it you know hey congrats uh, but you know, if you're always someone that's trying to save some money, which I mean, I feel like that's anybody, then let me help you all out with this video right here. I feel like it is kind of a good topic and one that, you know, maybe not a lot of people discuss because you know, everybody's paying the high prices right now. But you know, of course, if you're still trying to get, you know, the bang for your buck, I'm here to help you all out. So I hope you guys will enjoy this video again. If you want more content like this, if this is kind of, you know, stuff that, you know, interests you, sneaker related stuff, because I pretty much discuss anything in the sneaker game. Y'all can just go look at my content from the last week or two. I mean, the, you know, variety is there. So yeah, that's really it. Again, like on this video. I know I already said subscribe, so like will but just say like 266 likes, something random. I always try and say something random off the top of my head. So hope y'all will enjoy and leave any comments, questions. If you have a concern, let me know what it is down below. We can get that figured out. So let's just get into it. So the first thing I want to mention is the timing of when you buy a sneaker. So that is really one of the main thing. And of course, I'm going to be going through five tips in this video that really can help you all uh, help you all out with saving money on your sneakers. So the first one, again, is the timing of when you buy your sneaker. Are you someone that's trying to get an early pair? Are you, you know, going to wait till a month after the release? Are you going to get it right on release date? Are you able to secure a retail pair? That's kind of the many things you have to think about. Now, if you're someone that's pretty consistently able to secure a retail pair, then hey, you don't have to worry about overpaying. You know, this probably isn't a video that's really for you, but if you sometimes occasionally have to pay resale, some of the later tips will probably help you all out a little bit more. Maybe not the first one, but again, uh, aside from someone that, you know, is able to cop from retail often, which is pretty much nobody, let's be real. That's a that's a pretty rare occasion, but of course, you know, some people, I mean, most of these sneaker stores that you all see getting like hundreds or pairs or 200 pairs or people individually, uh, you know, getting 200, 300, 400 pairs of a sneaker that you may see on Instagram, you know, where they just got boxes on boxes, they're not paying retail either. You know, they're having to pay a backdoor plug and they're paying a fee on each pair, you know? so. Someone that's able to secure multiple retail pairs at once is someone that really has some skill. Uh, I've seen a couple people in Michigan that's able to do it, uh, that are able to do it. I don't know what's the deal with Michigan, but y'all, yeah, y'all got it up there. Y'all are really nice cooking some pairs. So I definitely have respect uh, for y'all up there, uh, especially with how cold it is. I could not live there. I got to keep it real. But first thing I want to mention, the timing when you buy a sneaker, that's very essential. So my main recommendation with what I do with most sneaker releases to save money, because let's be real, most sneaker releases, when it comes to early pairs, it is worth it to get an early pair some it is like a military black jordan 4 and with any early pair you have to you have to know you're overpaying you're not going to get a deal on any early pair really there's very few people that are able to get you know a direct foot locker contact and you know if you got a homie that works at foot locker you know finish line jd sports any of those locations you know for some of these bigger gr releases you know maybe talk to them be like hey you know i just want two pairs you know one my size you know one in a little extra size you know maybe i'll come here on release day use some of my points something like that just you know keep you a simple discussion like that and be like you know maybe you can low-key you know get me those two pairs for me and i know people that do that some people up in new york things like that and they get you know pretty good prices like if you're able to get a good price then but early pairs are usually not where it's at for you know getting a good price that's like very you have to kind of you know have that direct contact usually to get a really good price early and most of the time again I have that kind of thing that I've told most y'all wait two to four weeks after a release to really buy something and don't go buying something off apps too I mean just just there's different places well that's a later tip but just don't go buying stuff off apps immediately too that's how you overpay especially don't buy a sneaker right on release day that's usually the last thing i recommend again unless you're in some sort of lineup or you know some you're getting a pair for retail do not buy a sneaker on release day that's usually what i don't recommend i mean i bought uh, i'm kind of contradicting myself i bought you know uh military blacks on a release day for resale but i haven't lost on that yet because the demand for those is just crazy they haven't dropped for us in a while so that one i was kind of you know feeling safe with that. So the second tip I want to mention, aside from that one right there, is you really have to think about what can you afford? That's one thing you have to mention. Well, not what can you afford, but like, you know, do you care about the sneaker prices you pay? Again, this is just one I really want to get through real quick. This is just not really a tip, but just kind of like, I guess something you have to think about if you haven't really thought about this recently. Like, do you care about the sneaker prices you pay? Or, you know, are you able, you know, to just kind of pay whatever prices? Just kind of think about that for a second. Maybe try budgeting out what you spend on, you know, your personal collection or, or on sneakers 
reviews each month, you know, really just try and do that kind of organize it. I would recommend it so you can kind of see and, you know, understand like, hey, here's how much I'm spending on shoes. And e even for the pairs you resale, keep track of what shoes you end up reselling and buying. Even if it's a pair you lose, don't remove it from, you know, that list of shoes, you know, just mark it as sold and, you know, put it in like some sort of, you know, chart or something, you know, do, not a chart, but like Excel is a really good place to organize inventory that's kind of going in and out. You don't got to do all that. You know, I just use a notepad, but, you know, I end up having to do all the math, which is just like a mess. So yeah, just second thing I just want to mention, not really a tip, but just like think about what you could afford. Do you care about the sneaker prices you pay? One thing. Next up, another way you can kind of, I guess, not overpay on sneakers is think about how many pairs you're buying. Of course, if you're just buying one singular pair off somebody, most of the time, especially if you know if you're going to like an Instagram reseller, Facebook Marketplace, uh, offer up Mercari again. Always legit check whenever you're buying sneakers from people. Usually, I mean, if just you know, with things like Nike sneaker releases, things things like that, make sure you're asking for people's like order confirmations, uh, or you know, wait until like be like, hey, you know, can we get this deal done in hand? hand um and what, what i mean by that is you know like when they actually get the sneaker in hand ask them to send it like you send like you know pictures of it you know send a picture of like the box you know label things like that i usually don't do all that because most people i can trust and i also do legit check pairs when they land in hand so i don't know if they're you know fake or not i mean it's pretty simple like that i mean unless it's not like a you know nike panda dunk so i'm gonna be a little bit concerned there you know especially whenever someone hits me up like hey you know you want this pair of nike panda dunks because that's one of the that's one of the easiest pairs to fake but again off topic right there i wonder how many Stock, uh, fake StockX is sold of that dunk right there, probably through their app. <laughs> I don't even want to guess. It's just probably tens of thousands. But getting too good at, you know, making fakes. I don't even blame StockX that, you know, that much for that, to be honest. So there's only so much you can do. But again, really what, again, I'm kind of trying to get at right here is when you usually buy more pairs off somebody or more pairs from a certain location, they will give you more of a deal or more of a discount. That's kind of what I've noticed. My, my, my best deals on some of my, you know, sneak, you know, pairs I bought to hold, my sneaker investments, things like that have been when I bought more pairs off somebody, when I bought 10 pairs off somebody, when it's just been five or three pairs, you know, three pairs in different sizes you know like recently i bought some uh, military blacks in a variety of grade school sizes and adult sizes it got a really good deal for it because i bought you know a bunch of pairs off the person i think it was like five pairs or no no i just said it was three i don't know why i just capped like that <laughs> messing up my numbers i guess but yeah really three pairs is what i bought for the person and yeah i got a really good deal so that's kind of what i recommend is uh with any place ask if the person has more pairs or you know just again try and build a connection with somebody that's really an important thing with getting deals in the future this is one thing i've noticed too a lot of people that i've gotten deals with is that uh you know it's people that i've done a lot of business with in the past so try and build a connection with somebody again that's very important that's something i'm also trying to get out here so over time you know just do more you know kind of business you know you sell them items or you know they just sell you items you know you buy it sometimes you may overpay a little bit or you know you buy it a little bit early whatever it is but you know when you do that you're doing a favor for that person so then over time it'll pay back to you kind of if that person you know is you know generous and usually most people in the resale game they appreciate you know the consistent business so they will throw you deals and that's kind of what it is and also one thing you have to do one way to not overpay on sneakers is you have to stay firm with your prices this is what i've noticed uh you know kind of recently and kind of always is if you have a set price in mind you know if you're like okay i'm gonna pay this much you know for these sneakers and then you know somebody you know dms you and if it if it's a five dollar difference it's a ten dollar difference whatever it is do not budge do not move <laughs> you know keep it what it's at as petty as it sounds you know unless it's maybe like a thousand dollar sneaker or something like that you know then you know maybe you know we could you know figure something out there um of course you know someone buys the label etc etc you know for the shipping but yeah really just stay firm with your prices that's also another way to save money do not you know budge to the person because if you know if you're someone that consistently budgets with prices over time with the person then they're going to be like oh i'll know this person will eventually dm me back and be like oh all right you know let's do the deal but if you're somebody that's like you know very firm with your prices but you will you know you will pay like if, if they dm you back like hey let's do the deal at your price you and you're quick to respond you'll pay you know you'll do that over time you, you know again stay firm with your prices again with you know they you know offer you you know an item or something like that then you know they'll eventually probably you know fall back and you know pay your price you know they'll eventually be or not pay your price but you know sell it to you for your price so that's just kind of trying what uh kind of what i'm trying to get at lovely uh messy last like three sentences three sentences there come on tristan but yeah stay firm with your prices and you know buy more pairs can save you money and you know with the other pairs the extra ones just sell them off hold them whatever you want to do
Yeah. And the kind of final things I want to get at is again the model of the sneaker you are buying and then also the place you are buying from. So of course the main places I usually avoid, to be honest, when it comes to getting a better deal, GOAT, StockX, uh, you know, and any sneaker app, any you know sneaker market platform, I try and avoid because to be honest, they're, they're all taxed. I mean, if you're using it as a buyer, you're going to be overpaying. Now, I will say this, GOAT has a lot of options to make money. The GOAT has this thing called like GOAT storage, and I've seen a lot of people have been using it to their advantage recently for, you know, buying sneaker investments and holds uh, because GOAT just, you know, kind of keeps them stored at their warehouse. As you know, you're kind of like own personal thing, own personal location where you can keep your sneakers. And I think that's actually pretty dope. Um, and I, I mean, I, I think that's a great concept. So if you want to use GOAT for that, feel free. I actually don't feel like that's a bad idea. Um, and I know a lot of my people from, you know, overseas, Europe, places like that, use StockX to buy uh, a lot of, you know, their sneaker investments and things like that. And they do end up making money on that over time. It's just, you know, that's the only, you know, available option they have. But of course, my, one main thing I would probably recommend doing is I'd recommend, you know, looking up European based, uh, you know, sneaker market apps, things like that. So like European based apps that actually, you know, kind of serve more for overseas. I think Alias is one and I think Collect as well. Collect, K-L-E-K-T. I believe that's how it's spelled. Um, and I don't want to mess it up. If I mess it up, that's really bad. I need to, you know, take myself to summer school right now. But uh, yeah, basically, I almost forgot what I was going to say there. But yeah, basically, that's a European based app. And I, I think their fees are a little bit less. So there's some other places you could buy from, things like that. Uh, but yeah, those are, you know, a couple things I recommend just you have to think about again where you're buying from you know kind of be conscious about it if you're in the u.s of course i recommend local sellers always local connections kind of the way to save money because it you know eliminates you know your shipping costs and then again i kind of want to get back to this real quick you have to think about the model of the sneaker you are buying how hype is it at the moment is it in is it not you know that's that's really what you have to think about because if, you, if you're buying something like nike dunks right now something that's kind of flat you know probably heading down a little bit right now then yeah you know that's you know you might be able to get a little bit of a better deal on it but if you're, if you're trying to buy something like jordan fours then you know right now you're gonna, probably going to be paying the high you will be overpaying on them because they are you know kind of getting into style and i don't know why people are calling jordan fours new jordan ones I, I honestly don't like that comparison because you have to think about how uh how they were dropping jordan ones originally when they were super hyped compared to how they're dropping jordan fours right now when they're super hyped right uh, when fours are super hyped right now, they're not dropping any of them. But when Jordan ones were super hyped, they were dropping them like every week. So I don't know if they're going to start doing that with fours. They're going to have to start doing that with fours. I feel like to kind of have that comparison match because I don't know why people are calling fours new, uh, the new ones. Don't no, please no. But yeah, so just think about the model of the sneaker you're buying. Really, that's another important thing because it, when, it, when it really comes to paying the right price and everything it gets hard to pay the right price with the sneaker that's really in demand because everybody wants it and everybody's willing to pay the extra five to 10 just to get it on their feet. So, or on their feet. So you just have to think about that. But that's everything I really want to mention. This is just one of those videos where I really don't need to edit or say too much. I mean, really, it just, I feel like it just kind of where I'm talking to the camera, talking to y'all, just kind of giving y'all some pointers here. Hopefully it was helpful. Again, let me know if this video was good. If it was bad, honestly, just let me know. If it was not helpful, then yeah, you know, I'll work on you know making stuff that's a little bit more uh even even a little bit more structured uh and just kind of things that don't you know again be kind of more relevant to maybe just directly to sneaker invest in the sneaker market things like that and of course you can subscribe and like for more content like this i'll keep it very simple i know i said the like goal is like 266 something like that so if we could hit that that'd be dope if not it's really not the end of the world again i really appreciate you guys for tuning in and you know just kind of rocking with me here so that's it I'm Tristan. I got some stuff to sell and unbox today, so you'll see me posting on my Instagram. You can check all that down below, and hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.